I think what happens is we become more familiar and more comfortable with the discomfort of having these sorts of difficult conversations and navigating our relationships from a a new place, from a new template of really creating new relationship templates. Welcome to Confessions of an Ex-Therapist. I'm your host, Dr. Shamala. As a former therapist turned relationship strategist, I'm on a mission to help high-performing women build lasting relationships. Together, we are exploring how to communicate assertively, think confidently, and show up fearlessly in every aspect of our lives. If you are ready to up-level the quality of your relationships, you are in the right place. This is Confessions of an Ex-Therapist. Welcome back to Confessions of an Ex-Therapist. I'm super stoked for our conversation today. It is a follow-up to the conversation from our last episode. So if you haven't listened to that one, I want you to scroll back and take a listen to that. So today we're going to be talking about uh, silence and really how to break the silence in our relationships. So if you don't know and understand why silence is so problematic in our relationships, I'll give you a quick overview. And again, just jump back to episode number two so you can hear the context on that. So silence is a huge problem in our relationships. It's a template, a relationship template that so many women have learned as a way of operating and moving through their relationships. But what it does is it keeps our relationships stuck in distress because we're truly not showing up fully and authentically in those relationships. And so we're creating this false sense of intimacy. And so in order to build a real sense of intimacy, in order to deepen the connections and deepen the intimacy in our relationships, One of the things that we really need to learn or relearn is how to break that silence, how to actually be a little more open, a little more honest, uh, and a little more transparent in all of our relationships. That is what we are going to be talking about today. So uh, again, if you listen to episode number two, you would know and understand that silence is the single greatest predictor of distress in our relationships. It is the number one thing that really does erode the intimacy. It eats away at the intimacy of our relationships. And we know that when we don't have the space, the courage, and the freedom to express our needs, our wants, and our desires, what happens is resentment, bitterness, anger, frustration, these elements begin to build up in a relationship. And so obviously this is the last thing that we want, right? We do not want um, to be operating in relationships where there is an increased sense of bitterness, of resentment, of anger and frustration, because truly this begins to erode at the intimacy within that relationship. So the best and most effective way to build intimacy in our relationships and to create relationships that actually last is to what I call break the silence. We want to break this pattern or this template of being quiet, of being polite, being the good girl, of people pleasing, never saying no, not setting boundaries. We want to begin to break those templates in our relationships. And you know, as you listen to this episode, I want I'm going to share some concepts with you. I'm actually going to be sharing today four ways to practice breaking the silence in our relationships. But before we even go to that teaching, I want to give you a a mental framework um, that you can use and that you can adopt as you're listening to this episode. What I want you to think about is that the concepts that I'm going to share with you today they don't happen overnight. You're not going to learn. I'm going to share, you know, some practical strategies and some practical tools today, but they're not, you're not going to be able to adopt them overnight. They take practice. I'm still practicing um, every single one of these strategies. I practice them day in and day out. Uh, Are they easier for me to practice? Sometimes there's sometimes that, you know, these concepts are still very, very difficult for me to put into practice. The fear still comes up for me. Um, There are still times where I want to just avoid conflict, you know, run in the other direction um, and go back to some of those old templates that I had been brought up with. But I've realized that the more I put these concepts and these ideas and these strategies into place, 
I don't know if easier is not a good word. I don't like the the word easy. I think what happens is we become more familiar and more comfortable with the discomfort of having these sorts of difficult conversations and navigating our relationships from a, a new place, from a new template of really creating new relationship templates. So that's how I want you to think about today's episode and today's conversation is we are beginning to lay the framework for you to create a new relationship template where you begin to break the silence of those old templates. You begin to show up more fully. You begin to show up more authentically. You begin to actually show up. Like you actually get to be yourself in relationships, which is, I think, the most beautiful thing um, any of us can do in any relationship is truly, you know, show up fully and completely as we are. And, uh, you know, sometimes that's that's scary, right? Because we're, we're afraid of, of rejection and we're afraid of abandonment and we're afraid of disappointing other people, but I really want to encourage you before I even get into the teaching today, I want to encourage you that regardless of where you're at in this journey, uh, know that with practice, these skills do get easier. All right. So I want us to jump in, uh, jump into the teaching today. Um, so I want you to first understand that the best and the most effective way for you to build intimacy and to create relationships that not only last, but relationships that are thriving, that are optimized, that are fulfilling, that are satisfying, the best way to do that is to begin to break the patterns of silence within that relationship. So what do I mean by the patterns of silence? So, you know, in any relationship, and I've learned this personally for sure, and I've certainly learned this in my work with couples, is that in any relationships, there are like these things, these areas that are like no fly zones. Like it's just this area that we just don't go there. It's the thing that we don't talk about. It's the, the, the conversation that we don't have. It's the, you know, if we go there, it's just going to lead to a fight. And so what happens is on this, you know, sort of subconscious level as, as two, two people in the relationship, I, I, I mentioned couples, but it could really happen in any relationship is we make this unspoken agreement that we're not going to talk about certain things because those things are just too difficult. It's going to cause a fight. It's going to cause conflict and nobody wants that, right? So we learn to sweep certain things under the rug. We learn to, uh, you know, just avoid certain conversations. We learn to steer clear of certain topics. So it could be things like money, It could be things like making a change in your job. It could be things like your family of origin or your in-laws or something with uh, regards to parenting. Uh, It could be sex. Like it really could be anything. But those areas that we tend to avoid talking about or those topics that we tend to avoid talking about are often the ones that really do require our attention. They really do require our attention. We actually need to go there and we actually need to have these conversations because they're super important. If there's something in your relationship, doesn't matter which relationship it is. It could be a working relationship, right? Could be your partner. It could be a relationship with your, a parent. It could be a relationship with your, your child, adult child, your, a sibling. Doesn't really, friend, doesn't matter. But if there is a particular topic or a few topics that you are sweeping under the rug, those are probably the areas that really do deserve and require your attention. Those are probably the topics that if they continue to go un, like unspoken, in your relationship, they have the potential to really create a lot of conflict in the future or a lot of tension or distance or growing apart. And nobody wants that. So we need to, we need to um, understand that the most effective way to build intimacy and, and, and create relationships that are thriving and optimized is to get our head wrapped around this idea and this concept that we need to break the silence. Thanks for tuning in to Confessions of an Ex-Therapist, the podcast designed to help high-performing women just like you 
build better relationships. I've come to understand that the journey towards our best self is better traveled with friends. If you know someone who would benefit from advanced mindset, communication, and relationship strategies, I would love it if you would share this episode with them so that we can grow our audience and maximize our impact. So how do we actually break the silence? And what do I mean? I hope you understand what I mean by break the silence. What I mean by breaking the silence is this pattern of not being open, of not being honest, not being direct, right? So we break the silence by doing those very things. We break the silence by being direct, by being honest, by being open in our relationships. And there's a fancy term for this. It's actually not that fancy. It's also known as assertiveness. So assertive communication is how we actually break the silence. Assertiveness is predicated on the idea that we are being open and honest and direct in our relationships. Okay? So let me give you, I want to give you four ways that you can practice assertive communication, that you can begin to implement assertive communication in your own life and in your relationships, okay? The very first thing that you can do to begin practicing assertive communication is to begin to ask for what you need. You want to begin to ask for what you need. Now, There is a whole lot of strategies that you can implement around asking for what you need. There's some mindset pieces around asking for what you need, but the crux or the core of assertive communication is really being able to be honest and asking for what it is that you want, what it is that you need. Um, It's about really being honest about your desires, about what's working for you and what's not working for you. So the very, the very first element of assertive communication that I want us to think about today is the idea of asking for what you need, okay? The second thing you really want to be thinking about is beginning to say no. I'm going to pause. I'm going to pause for a fact because I know that if you're listening to this particular podcast, I know that if you are a woman and you are interested in having better relationships at one point or another, you have also struggled with saying no. I have struggled with saying no. I struggled with saying no for a very, very long time. And when I finally learned First of all, when I finally learned why saying no was important and when I finally learned the uh, um, how to say no and why it was actually going to improve my relationships and when I finally started to say no, guess what happened? People didn't like it. People didn't like it. And I bet <laughs> there were some people that didn't like me when I started to say no. And I uh, started to be called things like difficult, and she's so bitchy, and she always says no, and she's so selfish. And so this is what happens. And this is what we are afraid is going to happen. And this is why we don't say no. And listen, I'm telling you, as a recovering people pleaser that is still in recovery, still working on this, uh, this was the biggest reason I struggled to implement saying no. It's because I was just so afraid of what other people were going to think and how other people were going to feel and what would others say about me, right? And so we have to learn, guys, we really have to learn to that it's okay to say no. We have to learn that it's okay to say no. And just because other people are going to be upset or disappointed um, or activated or they're inconvenienced because we say no, doesn't mean we shouldn't do it. That's not a good enough reason not to do it. I I understand that it takes a lot of courage to say no. I know that it's probably going to begin to disrupt some of your relationships if you say no, but I want you to consider the impact on your own mental health of continuing to say yes when really you should be saying no. There There are probably times and instances and events and maybe there are people in your life that you need to say no to more often, but you keep saying yes to keep the peace and to avoid any disruption in that relationship. And I want you to know and understand that this is having a negative impact on your mental health. Okay. 
Third thing, the third way that we can practice assertive communication is that we need to begin setting and maintaining boundaries. And listen, I will do a whole podcast on this because this is a whole topic in and of itself. We need to begin setting and maintaining boundaries. And this is 110% a topic that I will address in a full episode. We're going to, we're going to totally jam on this, um, for a whole session, but I need to say it here that, that practicing assertiveness, practicing assertive communication means that we need to begin to set and maintain boundaries and setting and maintaining boundaries are actually two concepts in and of themselves because setting a boundary is one thing, right? Actually saying, you know, I'm so sorry. I don't like it when you speak to me like this and I need you to stop. That wasn't a very good example. I was trying to think off the top of my head. Um, but you know, you set the boundary saying, uh, uh, you know, unfortunately, um, I can no longer, you know, take calls after 9 PM. It's just too late in the evening for me. So if you'd like us to connect or if you'd like us to chat, could you please call me at this time, right? So setting the boundary is one thing, but then maintaining the boundary is a whole other thing, right? So setting the boundary is simply letting that person know that you need a particular boundary in place. The uh, And that's hard. I get it. That's hard. But you know, in my experience, the even harder work is maintaining the boundary. It's reinforcing the boundary that you've already set and reminding that person that you have set a boundary, that you have asked for things to go in a particular way and that that person might actually be violating that boundary. So that is the third way that we can practice assertive communication is by setting and maintaining boundaries. And yes, I promise you, I will do a whole episode on boundary setting. The fourth thing is we need to be open about our wants, our desires, our thoughts, and our feelings. Listen, you have no idea how many times I've had a woman tell me that, you know, well, it's okay. I'll just keep it to myself, right? Like I don't, I don't like the way that um, my mother talks to me, but you know what, Shamla, it's fine. I just, I just won't say anything because, you know, she's old and you know, I just don't want to upset her and, you know, like her health is no good. And so I'm just going to keep it to myself. I'm just going to be quiet. I'm not going to say anything. Right. And what happens is we begin to have these really surface relationships in our lives because we lack the courage to actually be open about our wants, our desires, our thoughts, and our feelings. So in order to Uh, avoid conflict. And in order to maintain the peace, what we end up doing is we go underground with our thoughts, our wants, our desires, our thoughts, our, you know, our feelings, all of those sorts of things. And what we really need to do is be more open in those areas. So we need to be open in order to practice assertive communication. And going underground with your thoughts and your feelings is actually doing a disservice to a relationship if that relationship is important to you. So if something is happening in a relationship that is uncomfortable for you, it's just not working for you, it's offensive to you, it's hurting you, I don't know, whatever that thing is, keeping that to yourself for the purpose of maintaining the peace is actually doing the relationship a disservice. So it's really important to be open Um, about our, our wants, our desires, our thoughts, and our feelings. So those are the four ways that you can begin to practice assertive communication right now. And I wouldn't recommend starting with all four. I would say pick one of those elements. Pick one relationship that you can begin practicing assertiveness with. And you want to pick a relationship that you think it might be fairly, it's not going to be easy necessarily, but it'll, you don't want to pick the hardest relationship that you're struggling with to, uh, when you're beginning to practice one of these new skills. Okay. So that's what I want you to try. Now I need to say this, um, as you think about assertive communication, I alluded to it in our last episode. I know that I'll probably do a a whole episode on this particular thing that I'm about to say to you. It's this. So when we start practicing assertive communication and we start being a little more open, we start asking for what we need, we begin to say no, we begin to set and maintain boundaries. When we begin to do that, one of the most important things that I want you to remember is that is this, 
When we are assertive, it means that we have the courage and the integrity to be open and honest in our relationships. I'm going to say that again. When we are assertive, what that actually means is that we have the courage and we have the integrity to be open and honest in our relationships. What it does not mean is that the other person is responsible for meeting all of our needs. I want to say that one again because it's really important. I want you to take this in. So assertiveness is about you having the courage and the integrity to show up. To show up, to show up openly, to show up honestly, to show up authentically, to be direct, to not be passive aggressive, to not go underground with your needs. That's what assertiveness means. It means you have the courage to show up and you have the integrity to show up in your relationships. What assertiveness does not mean, so please do not get this twisted because it it will lead you um, down the wrong thinking. Assertiveness does not mean that you, that other person is going to meet your needs. So just because you ask for something, just because you express your wants, your desires, your thoughts, or your feelings does not mean that that other person is going to meet those needs, nor does it mean that it's that other person's responsibility to meet those needs right? Assertiveness is not about the outcome. Assertiveness does not mean that the very thing that you want is going to happen. And that's not why you should be assertive because that's that's not where, where I'm going with, with this conversation and with this topic, right? So if you're listening and you're, you're taking notes and you're going, amazing, Shamla, you're going to tell me exactly how to get my partner to do exactly what I want. That is not what this is about, right? You've missed me here. What this is about, it's about you having the courage and the integrity to show up as your best self, regardless of the outcomes in your relationships and in your life. It's about you having the courage to say what you mean. It's about you having the integrity to be open and honest about your needs. It's about you showing up fully knowing that things may not go as you want, things may not go um, the way that you've asked for them to go, that the people in your life, your partner, your mother, your child, your whoever, they may not meet your needs, but you've got the courage and you've got the integrity to show up fully in your relationships, openly, honestly, directly, authentically. Okay. I promise you, I will do a full, full episode on all of that. But the takeaway from today uh, is really to understand that number one, assertive communication is absolutely critical if you're going to have amazing relationships. There's just no way around it. The second takeaway are the four ways to practice assertive communication. You need to ask for what you need. You need to start saying no. You need to start setting and maintaining boundaries and you need to be more open. Those are the four ways that you can begin to practice assertive communication. And the final piece that I just uh, touched on that I promise I will expand on is this idea that assertive communication does not mean that you get everything that you ask for. Assertive communication means that you have the courage and the integrity to show up in your relationships. So friends, I want to leave you with some parting thoughts. So is it is it scary to do this? Is this work scary? Is it scary to break the silence? Is it scary to practice assertive communication? Yes, it absolutely is. 110%. It is there are still times where I get nervous to have one of these difficult conversations. There are still times where I'm like weighing the consequences of being silent or being assertive, right? It is absolutely scary to break the silence because what you're probably doing is breaking a long-standing pattern, a long-standing relationship template that tells you that your job is to make other people happy and to keep silent and to not rock the boat. So it is absolutely scary, 100%. But here's what I want you to to think about. And here's what I want you to use to fuel the courage. 
If you are committed, if you are interested, and if you are invested in improving the quality of your relationships, then it's necessary, right? If you are interested, invested, and committed to improving the quality of your relationships, then being assertive, being open, being honest, and showing up with courage and with integrity is absolutely necessary. All right, my friends, I hope that you enjoyed this week's episode and I will see you in the next one. If you are getting value out of Confessions of an Ex-Therapist, would you mind doing two things for me? Subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode and leave us a review. Reviews help other high-performing women know that this is the place to be to access advanced communication and relationship strategies that can truly transform their lives. I would deeply appreciate you taking that action for me. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you next time.